are going to put some crown in Clara's big girl room and I was going to show you how we did it. Um, to do it and make our lives a little bit easier, we're going to use the Craig Crown Pro, which we bought at Lowe's, but I think you can get just about anywhere, um, because it makes cutting the crown on an angle a lot easier than uh, when I was doing it without this tool. Oh yeah, and it's about 30 bucks if you um, want to get one yourself. We need to measure or take some measurements in the room first, uh, just so that we know exactly what we're cutting beforehand. So one thing that the Crown Pro comes with is this little angle finder, which helps you find the angles. Surprise. Um, so what you do, because you want to make sure that you know uh, what angle your two walls meet at. Most walls are 90 degrees, but some aren't, and even some that look like they're 90 are not. So all you have to do is you just hold this guy up in the corner, and it's, make sure it's flush against both walls, and it's got this little screw that you just tighten. And then it says right there what your angle is. Um, I go around the room and do every single corner at once, just while I'm thinking of it, and I make a note of it in a paper that I can reference later. The second measurement is the length of your wall. So we just use a tape measure. We use two hands, myself and Sherry, because these are long walls. Four walk. hands. Four hands, excuse me, we <laughs> use two bodies, um, because it's a lot easier than trying to hold it yourself. So I'm not gonna do this on camera because I don't have my, my helper helping me hold, but basically just make sure you get in the corner and get really precise because even you know a quarter of an inch off on these measurements can make your life um, more difficult than it needs to be. And then like I did with the angles in each of the corners, I made a note of each wall's um, length on a little sheet so I can look at it later. And then the last thing I did before I did any cutting was I marked my walls with all the studs. Um, I use this little stud finder I have and it's just easier to do this while you're starting. Um, that way when you're actually ready to nail in your crown, you know exactly where the studs are and you can go into them right away. So I'm just gonna do this real quick. There I have a stud. And I just mark that guy, making sure to do it low enough on the wall or high enough on the ceiling so that when I'm holding the piece of wood up, it's not blocking my mark. And you can obviously erase this later. So with the angle of the corners measured, the length of the walls measured, and my studs marked, I am almost ready to start cutting. There's just one more thing to do. Before I can cut anything, I actually have to set up the crown Pro tools to the right angle because basically what this does is it holds your wood up as you can see against an angle so you're actually cutting your crown at the same angle that it will sit against the wall so you actually have to find the angle first that's called the spring angle I have learned and the angle finder that comes with the crown pro tool um, actually lets you do that so what you have to do is hold up here I'll do it this way hold up a piece of crown and then you can just set the angle finder on it. You want to do the flat back of it and then the bottom edge. And then just like I did on the wall, I'm going to hold that. This is harder to do on camera than I expected, but I've done this before. And then it actually shows you right on the tool what the spring angle is. I believe the standard angles are either 38, 40, or 40, no, 45, or 52. So mine's a standard 38. Um, and then what I do at that angle is on the bottom of the Craig tool, there's this little red guide that shows you all the various angles and there's a little uh, screw that I've tightened really hard by hand. But if you loosen it, this lets you set whatever that angle is. So I'm gonna set mine to 38 again. Okay, so I've got it there, I'm just gonna tighten this. And make sure you tighten it really hard because I found that if it's not tight enough, as you go, it starts to slip a little bit and then your, your cuts can get off. Okay, so now I've got this all set up and it's ready to cut. Okay, I'm outside now with all of my supplies ready to cut. Um, what I've got with me is my cheat sheet from inside with all my measurements on it, a pen and a tape measure for marking the cuts on my wood, my crown molding itself. This is a short scrap piece that I'm just gonna use for demonstration purposes. And I've got the um, Craig Crown Pro and my miter saw. So if you remember, we already set this inside um, to the angle at which it's going to hit the wall, the spring angle. So this is already set, already set. All we have to do now is set my saw for each of my cuts. The um, thing that was always confusing to me before using this uh, is where does what side am I cutting on? Which way do I swing my saw? So this has a handy guide right on the front of it to. Um, remind you, depending on what side of the wall you're cutting, your left inside corner or your right inside corner. That's when you're actually looking at the corner, the left is on the left side, the right is on the right side. I know that sounds obvious, but for a while it was confusing to me whether you're talking about the left side of the wood or the left side of the corner. So the left inside corner is when you're facing the corner, 
um, the left side. So that's the first one I'm going to cut. And based on the little key that it has here, I need to put my Craig jig on this side and then I have to angle my saw this way. Now what you're doing, the angle here is determined by taking half of that wall angle you got. So my wall angle is 40, it was 90 degrees, so half of that is 45. So I'm setting my saw right at 45. I'm gonna place the Craig jig right here, making sure that it's out of the way of the actual blade itself when the blade comes down. Comes down. Not the jig. I'm sorry, not the jig, the Craig Crown Pro. <laughs> and then the next thing to do is to set my piece of wood. Um, the thing that you have to remember to do this is to put the bottom edge up. So it's kind of upside down. It would sit against the wall like this with this smaller um, detail at the bottom. So when I put it in my saw, I have to flip it over so this is at the top. So I'm gonna put this here, slide it in, so that again, the Crown Pro is out of the way of the saw, but the wood is not. And then fire up. And so what I've just made there is a left inside corner cut so that when it sits here, another piece can come right against there at a perfect 90 degree angle. Okay, I've made my first cut on one end of the board, which is kind of arbitrarily at the end. Um, but when I make my second cut, I have to be pretty precise because that's going to determine the length of the board. The, the board has to fit perfectly against the wall. So the thing to remember is always measure the side of the crown that's going to be against the wall, not the part of the ceiling, because you've measured the wall and that's the part that's going to sit precisely there. So I've laid out my tape measure. It's right here at 33 and 133 and an eighth. And I've marked it and now I can take my board up to the saw to cut. When doing my second cut, that has to be pretty precise. I sometimes err on making it a little bit longer than uh, my precise measurement because you can always come back and trim a board a little bit more if it's too long. But if it's too short, you may have wasted a whole board uh, that won't fit on your wall. So uh, if you want to be safe like me, you can do that. You might have to do two cuts, but at least you're not wasting as many materials. Okay, so we cut our piece and now we're back in the room ready to hang it. Well, we actually started to hang it already because I need Sherry to do the camera. So um, this has to be up here already. So it just has a couple nails holding it in place, but I wanted to show you. We pushed it flush up against the, the ceiling as best as we can. Our ceilings are not flat, go figure. So you see a little gap here, but I can push that better into place and whatever's left will just be filled with caulk. But it's right up in the corner and I've gone ahead and marked my um, studs as you saw before. So what I'm gonna do is I have my nail gun here is I'm gonna push this up as best I can. And then I'm gonna go right into the bottom because I know from looking at the molding, this is where it's thickest. And I'm gonna angle it like this so it goes right through the thick part of the molding, not into the um, air space behind it, and pull my trigger. In addition to doing the um, nails down here on the bottom against the wall, I've also been putting them in the ceiling as well. I'm doing it in the same spots so they line up, but I, this time I'm just angling the gun different again so that it goes through kind of the meat of the crown and into the ceiling itself. So there we go, and I'm just going to do this all the way down the line at each stud so it holds up into place. Okay, now we're checking the fit of the other piece, which we've already cut. If Sherry, you can just push it down a little bit. Yeah, pretty good. Um, I can probably get a little closer once I have two hands at my disposal, but even if not, that much can be filled with caulk. So now this is ready to get nailed in as well. Now that all of my crown is in, just to put some finishing touches on it, I've got to caulk the seams. So I've already got this ready to go. It is paintable caulk. You want to make sure that's paintable. Otherwise, um, you're going to run into trouble when you go to paint it. So what I like to do just to fill in some of these gaps um, here where it doesn't meet the ceiling because the ceiling isn't level, um, also in the nail holes and this little bit of a seam before between here is I just go along the crack. I've already started right there. And I'll do a little bit in here. And then I go back with my finger and just wipe it a few times till it's smooth. It's helpful to have a paper towel on hand for this. And then you can also use some of the excess on your finger to go into these nail holes a little bit too. So I'm gonna keep doing that. 
Okay, so I've got this corner pretty much all done and smoothed out so you can see how it already looks a lot nicer. Um, I've got to do the rest of the room and then eventually we'll need to come back and paint because there's, you know, scuff marks and stuff and even though this is primed, it's not quite as nice as actually being painted. But other than that, we're done. Thank you.